It's okay. We got this. Yeah. We got it. Oh, my God. Y'all, it's season three. Yes. Season three, episode one. <laughs> Exciting. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited. Okay. I've been on a hiatus. So, we definitely going to talk about that because that's what they were wondering about. I know it. I know you're wondering about my hiatus, but we're definitely going to talk about that for sure. Yes. But I have the lovely, the 91st. 91st. The 91st. I'm so excited you're here, girl. To start it off, we're going to do a Texas tour this season. So definitely look out for all of the Texas queens. But um, this episode is very, very special to me. I know we talked about that earlier that it was very special to me. We coming back. Right. Okay. Back, back like- and better. Back and better, back like I never left. Right. 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 So this is episode one of season three. We're visual. You can see me now. I know everybody's <laughs> wondering about what I look like. And that was not my vision. I was like, well, I don't want them to know what I look like. I want them to just listen to me and right. listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Right. Mm-hmm. And I wonder about what I got on, you know. But you know, I got on the illustrious Winston Salem State University. That's my alma mater. So definitely have to rep them wherever I go. Right, right. Um, so I'm really happy. We're gonna dig into this episode. As you guys know, my name is Naya. I'm just your regular schmegular girl. I'm just here to dust off my crown, add gems to your crown, you add gems to mine. Mm-hmm. Um, and just uplift girls before, during, and after college. So I love that. Definitely for all my HBCU girls. I am biased, by the way, <laughs> just to let you know. Yes, I am. Um, so this is just a safe space for our queens to kick back, talk, and have some good girl time. Yes. So yes. yeah, I'm so excited. So let's get started with this week's gym of the week. Yay! So this week's gym of the week is so important because it's actually like the title of the season. Mm-hmm. And I love Beyonce. Okay. If you know, you know. <laughs> um, and find your way back. Have you heard that song? Yes, find your way oh, back. Yes. Oh my God! Like it, it's like ministers to me. I don't, I don't want to say Beyonce. You know, people are so controversial. People, but that song really does something for me because of this hiatus, of this time, of this gap that I've had of not podcasting, of not giving myself and encouraging HBCU girls. You know, I really had to find my way back, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. I really had to find who I really was. I really had to find a life to seek. Um, and that's a process within itself. Yes, ma'am. And everybody can relate to that, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely really excited about that gym because it kicks off this season. It kicks off my reasoning. It kicks off my why, why I do this, why I drove three hours. <laughs> And 30 minutes to the middle of nowhere. And we love you for that. <laughs> to go see Miss TV. I mean, you know, it, that's my why, right? Because I love it. I enjoy it. And it's me. It's my gift. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. nobody can take it away from me. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, so just to, if you don't know, it's it's just like really motivating you. Yeah. And letting you know that um, you can find your way back. It's a big world out there. Mm-hmm. Trials, yeah. tribulations, things, people don't like you, people got this to say, that to say. Um, but in your mind you have to always have it. Know that. Know your roots. Know where you come from. Know your why. So yeah. Yeah, and I think that's very imperative. Like even for me and my journey coming to Prairie View, like going back to in a sense my childhood mindset, being unapologetically myself and not being fearful of who I am. So in a sense that can correlate to how I am, finding my way back to being okay with who I am and where I am and not having to let that judgment of others persuade me to feel indifferent about myself. So I definitely feel like that song could even correlate to how I'm, my journey being this Prairie View, yeah. I'm gonna add a little clip of the song in there because I, me me just saying the words, you know. It doesn't impact you the way it is. what Beyonce is trying to yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So that was y'all just extra that I omit those words. Just <laughs> we're gonna add a little bit in there, or maybe like the album or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm that song. I'm telling you, I was literally listening to it on my way up here mm-hmm. um, because it's really that impactful to me. And um, it's just, it's, I had to dig deep to find my way, girl. Yeah, find my why because right. I was like, well, 
they ain't heard from me, so might as well I could just stop. But nah. No. Nah. You're ready for season three. Yay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, like we, I was saying earlier, I have the 91st. Miss Prairie. Miss Prairie. You, honey, honey, honey. She's your queen to be. A queen to be forever, a queen who do whatever his highness desire. I'm you are so pretty, by the way. Thank you. You are too. Yes. You are too. I was like, are you gonna get all done up for little old me? <sighs> I know. Just little old me from North Carolina. You don't got to, but thank you so much for being a part of season three, being a yes. part of my why, being a part of my purpose. Um excited that you're here um so we're definitely going to dig deep in your platform and what you have going on come give us the deep and just you know some fun stuff along the way yeah. well i'm very thankful for this opportunity to be at this podcast mm -hmm. i would like to say i'm nia mcneil i am a junior computer science major from the sweetest city sugarland texas oh. and yeah, I'm the 91st Miss Prairie View. <laughs> okay. Sugar sweet, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was coming up, y'all. This is such in a rural area. It, <laughs> it is I, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, girl, where's the MLK at? Where are we at right now? Um, but I was really glad to come on the camp. The camp is beautiful, y'all. It's so beautiful here. Um, I really like it. It's huge, though. It is, and it's growing. It's still growing. We just built a $70 million engineering a building, I'm yes. I'm telling you, these HBCUs will find some money. Yes, They yes. will find some money under the trees, under somewhere, under the ground, <laughs> from my ancestors. They will find some money to build the building. But it's just great to even know that this was once a plantation and yeah. to know that we have grown to this this level of a university. Like, that is just a blessing in itself, just to see how prosperous our, I know our ancestors are like looking at us like, wow, you guys are doing the dang thing. Mm -hmm. So just very, very blessed. Everybody here is very blessed to be our Prairie View. We even consider ourselves a Prairie View A&M University student. So, yeah. Aww, look at you, so much pride for your school. I love it. You know, I'm a fifth generation. A fifth generation? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go down the line. Okay, so it's a, I'm gonna start with me first. Okay. So actually my brother also attends here. Okay. So he's a business finance major. I'm a computer science major. My mom attended here. She was a nursing major. And then her both of her parents came here. So my grandfather came here for electrical engineering. My grandmother came here for education. And then it goes up. Well, actually her sisters, there's other people as well. Okay, okay. But yeah. just to stick on the, the generation. Yes, the generation, I have a great aunt, great, great aunt, excuse me. She came, and at the time, they were doing certificates. They didn't have degrees. So she was here for home ec. And wow. the one above her, I don't have any information about her, them so just yet, but I, yes. I'm, girl, what? <laughs> I know. <That's> okay. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought I was doing a different thing. I'm a legacy as well. My dad went to Winston State University okay. as well. Love that. Um, so I kind of feel, but you guys. A hotel we got game. numbers, yeah. Y'all can have a hotel. You guys tailgate like your family tailgate for the game? They will now, now that COVID is done. Okay. But yes, they are trying to get an RV. I mean, I have cousins walking around here. I had a cousin graduate last year. So this is really a family affair, a family oh, reunion. Girl, go ahead. Go ahead. Because me too. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm like, where well, your great, your great on that girl? <laughs> I'm <laughs> expecting that plate. I'm expecting you. Yes. November 4th. I'm excited. Mark your calendars. So when is coronation? November 1st. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> okay. Because it just brings upon so many more nerves on top of nerves of this first time visual podcast for the people. But we're doing the dang thing. Look at, look at her. She looks so good. Thank you. I'm sorry. I probably did so much going on here. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I don't want, let me tell y'all, I really do not want this visual thing to be like a thing. Yeah. Like I really don't. I just want it just you talking and just so happens to be a camera right here. Yeah, just casual. Just casual, casual conversation. It's giving girl talk with TikTok. Just raw, unfiltered. Yeah. Yeah, tell it how it is. Yes. 
pretty much. We like to keep it real. Let's keep it real. I don't like all that pressure too much, and I'm not gonna want to do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, good. Pr- there, there's a thing called good pressure, though, mm-hmm. right? When God applies that pressure on you, correct? Like mm-hmm. sometimes you need that pressure to make those diamonds, but sometimes when it's when it's so much pressure, now your mental health is all out of whack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not good pressure. You gotta enjoy it. You gotta. You gotta enjoy the pressure. Yeah. You might not understand the pressure. Yes. <laughs> but at least you understand that there's an end. You know, you know God got you. You know it, you're just not here by yourself. You're not doing this for nothing type thing. Right, right. Then yeah. We apply that pressure. Love that. Wait, Ari say pressure? You don't know that song. I do. I do oh. I do know that song. Oh, I'm about to say, girl, don't leave me hanging. You don't know Ari Lena? No, I do, I do. Okay, okay. I, I just don't know the lyrics off the top. <laughs> That's all I know. I was just Damn, pressure. Oh, okay, know. okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, I thought you were expecting me to catch on. I was like, <laughs> no, that's all I know too. I might know a little bit, but when you put I on the song, it, yeah, yeah, when you put on the song, I can, I can sing along. But my, what came in my head was pressure. Pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yay. So, uh, yeah. So, thank you so much for being a part of season three. Um, and we're gonna go into our hot topics. Ugh. I know y'all are ready for this. Right. <laughs> so obviously this hot topic has to be sis, where you been, where you been, where you been, where you been. Right? I've let so many queens get away from me over like what three years, I wanna say, or two and a half ish. Um, and I hated it, but I was definitely being a good old stalker. <laughs> stalking all y'all pages for sure. Um, but yeah, so I was telling you that I had graduated. From grad school, and that's why I left off. I graduated from grad school in 2020. Miss COVID came around, did her thing, um, and it definitely hit my home. Um, and my mom passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. She had lupus, um, and then caught COVID. So oh. I mean, gone within days. Oh, wow. <laughs> so um, from there, my world everything stopped thank god school was over Mm -hmm. because i wouldn't even know what i would have done like i i'm not gonna say i wouldn't have finished because i probably would have been you know i'm saying so close Mm -hmm. but um it would have been a thought Mm -hmm. because it was so just it was too much Mm -hmm. it was entirely too much and it's never good to give right to give into others when your cup is empty right never good to do that right queen i'm talking to you it's never good to do that, right? Take that time for yourself mm-hmm. to replenish your cup. Because even before your reign or during your reign, even after your reign, you know, you need to take that with you because it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be good for anybody. Right. You only suffer at the end by doing that. That's very true. That's um, very true. And the people around you too, because you're trying to help, but it's not even coming across. It, it's not gonna help them. It's not because it's just. It's not even beneficial for you. You just you can't even hold it yourself. You have to give it to somebody else, and that's not fair. Mm-hmm. You got to put the mask on yourself before you can put the mask on somebody else. Mm-hmm. Your school included. That is very true. Right? Mm-hmm. So um, that's the reason for my hiatus. Um, I needed therapy. <laughs> I had just moved to Texas from North Carolina. So my way. yeah, that was a huge move. Um, and so I was trying to settle in. And I just went to school and spent all these thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands dollars here in school. <laughs> yeah. And I need a job, I need a career, I need something, something tangible, a check. <laughs> something I can hold it to my hand and say, yes, degree and check, right? Right. We're so excited about this degree, but where's the check? Where's the money? Where's the funds? Right. Um, so I definitely had to focus on that as well. And even with that, it's like, okay, do I go home? You know, and my mom just gave me her blessing to move to Texas and we cried yeah. it out, we hugged it out, we did all we can, you know what I'm saying? And I'm so grateful for that moment because it was the last moment I had wow. with her. Um, and so, cause it was three weeks I had moved to Dallas. Three weeks later, my mom passed. Oh, wow. So it was very difficult for me to continue this podcast, even though I love it, even though um, it's great. It, it empowers so many HBCU girls around. And I didn't want to feel like I was leaving you guys hanging, queens hanging. 
but I need to take care of me. Right. right? I, I needed to take that time for me. Um, and so, yeah, so we back. We're visual now. And we're better. And yeah. we're doing this Texas tour because I've done all the, um, just about all of the queens, HBCU queens in North Carolina. Okay. Um, so I'm making my way around Texas. Love that. Okay. Da, 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 da. Um, so yeah, that's the reason for my hiatus. Um, I had to pour into myself therapy, crying it out, talking it out, um, getting my creativity from God to know what I want to talk about um, so that he can use me. I'm literally just a vessel, y'all, be honest, um, yes. so that he can use me because when you're so crowded with other things, you can't focus mm -mm. on, you know, um, your purpose sometimes, and that's okay. Um, and even finding out where your purpose is in school, right? Don't be yeah. so hard on yourself. So yeah. that's, that's it. That's all, folks. That's, I mean, that's it. Nothing too crazy. No boy. Nothing crazy with the boys, child. <laughs> Just life. Uh, Just the living. circle of life. The mm -hmm. cycle of life. Um, and it's a beautiful, sad, mad, horrible, tragic thing. But... We here for a good time now, a long time. Yes, that's and, true. Uh, God got us regardless. He did. Yeah. He'll never leave us. Never leave us. Yeah. I mean, self care is very important. Um, definitely putting yourself first just to get through anything. Like you said, you can't pour into others unless you pour into yourself first. And at times, you know, you don't know your journey. You don't know the destination. I'll say. Um, and God will put you by yourself just so that you can get close to him and depend on him and to learn to trust him. So whenever he does take you through those trials and tribulations, it's not as stressful and like hard because, you know, you have somebody you can depend on. Mm -hmm. So definitely taking self-care, um, taking those times to put the make yourself that priority is definitely imperative in college, especially because sure. college work, the workload here, I didn't expect it from high school. This transition, I'm still, I'm a junior and I'm still trying to get over it. I'm like, this is different. So definitely taking that self care and making yourself a priority and making sure that you're in the right headspace to do everything that you want to do is definitely important. Even in life, I, I will start now. So whenever it comes to the real world and it hits you the way it hits you, it's not new. It's it's something that you've practiced along. And even though things are going to be new coming along with the real life and real world, it's going to be an easier transition. I'm speaking that into existence. I'm manifesting that for myself. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, sure. manifesting it. Um, the real world is just going to work. <laughs> I just want everybody to know what it is. <laughs> because growing up, that's all I heard. Yeah. Get into the real world. We need to get into the real world. Girl, it's just going to work. It's waking up. Maybe having a little morning routine, mm -hmm. going to work, coming back, maybe having your little five to nine routine, going to sleep, waking right back up. Going, going to work. work. Ooh. That's uh, just HBCU girls that you did not know. And you're from like a small town or something like that, like Sugar Land. land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's southwest of Houston. Girl, the suburbs. It's so many little towns. It isn't, yes. Girl, Madisonville, Melissa, Anna. Oh, that's new to me. Yes. That's in Houston? No, it's in Texas. Oh, just in Texas. Okay. Because I live in Dallas. Okay, so, okay. So I came from, well, like a little north of Texas. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Three hours this morning? Today, yes. Oh, wow. I needed this road trip, though. Okay. I did that, though, for all the uh, queens. Okay, so you're used oh, to driving so long. I'm used to okay. driving. And like I said, I just moved here. So I kind of want to see what Texas is all about. And now I just see small towns. I don't really see a lot. It's just big with small little towns. Yes. Lots of land. Lots of, lots it's giving of land. lots of land. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty much. Just lots of land and cattle. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's what it's coming from the suburbs and coming to the country. Girl. It's like this is different. Like yeah. I have to say I'm driving into the city nowadays just mm -hmm. to go to H E B. Or Target. Or Target. Girl, your Target is like <laughs> <laughs> We gotta go to Houston to go to Target. Yeah. That, that's a journey. 
That's why I have to like pick a weekend out of the month. So, so I'm do not. Do y'all have a Chick Fil A on campus? We do. Yes. We do have a Chick Fil A. I'm, I'm about to get up and give God some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting used to the mic, y'all. But I would have to like. I don't know. How far should you have a Starbucks? They're actually building one. Yeah. They're finally building one. We're so excited. Hopefully, it's here by homecoming yes. because I need that for finals week. Yeah. Yes. I got her lucky. Look at for Yes, I do. <laughs> I was hoping when I was there, I was like, oh, I got her this. Lord, I hope they have a stuff, something near me. <laughs> yes. Um, but yes. Uh, um, yeah. I'm excited. It's great. It is. I'm excited for the Chick fil A and oh. the Starbucks. Because mm -hmm. that's what's inside. Aren't we all? You need that. Yeah, something out here. But honestly, it's really nice. The peace and quiet, it really keeps you locked into your school studies. So. It does. Yes. It's, really, it's nothing. It's no rah-rah. You have to actually drive to the rah-rah. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so your brother goes here. Mm -hmm. Wow. How was that? Honestly. Now that you're clean, I mean, like, how has that, the dynamic, excuse me, dynamic change or no Oh, so my brother and I, we've been locked in since, like, we were younger. So he's, he's actually my older brother. Okay. Um, however, um, so he's a business finance major, and he came last year. It was his first year here. So I was able to experience my first year on campus by myself. So I'm the baby of the family. So, you know, I always have my parents always doing everything for me and stuff. So this was definitely a pivotal moment for me just to learn life for myself. Um, and then I think him coming here the following year was very nice. Like, I I enjoy my brother, me and him. He tell, he knows all my secrets. It, well, not, maybe not all, but he knows most of my secrets. But, and then same with, like, we're just very transparent. Is that the yeah. word? Yeah, yeah. He's like, he definitely makes sure to watch out for me if I do have stuff about boys. You know, he definitely keeps me on your toes? No, my toes, but he keeps me. Very narrow. Well, I'm trying to yes, 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 yes. I think, yeah, that's the, mm -hmm. like he keeps me um, aware of the things that these guys have in mind and stuff mm. like that. So, yeah, he definitely, it's definitely good to have him here. And good. he's literally my neighbor. So, you know, it's. Girl, what? <laughs> he's my neighbor. So, it's really, it's really nice. The dynamic hasn't really changed. I mean, I know my life is more busy more time consuming mm -hmm. so i'm not really always with him and available um however he has his own life so whenever we convene so. we we convene we convene and um mm -hmm. typically on a sunday you know go to church um have god within our lives for sure and um it's just really it's a really good time having my brother here and especially i think to experience it without him and then mm -hmm. to have him here and then now with the miss prairie view he is like my backbone. Yeah. So whenever I have those moments, he's like, okay, come here. Like he's the listener, I'm the talker. <laughs> so he'll just listen to me and really just, and if I can't pour back into myself, he he has the energy to pour into me. As much as I do that to him at these moments, especially now being Miss Prairie View, he does that a lot. And I'm very grateful and thankful that, for that. Yes. That and, the, network. and the patience of it all. Because, I mean, I might have my days more than I would expect before I'd you know, pursued Miss Prairie View, but he's always ready with great words to get me right back on track. And I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah. Um, every queen that I talk to, they always have that close knit network and that's so good mm -hmm. because you need that balance. Mm -hmm. You need that, okay, bring it back in. Yes. Like, okay, this is who I am. I can't lose me in this process. Yes, you can't. You can't lose you in that. So when you have those people around you that remind you, like, girl, okay, well, you just need to chill out. <laughs> yes. Okay. Like, this is just this. This this will pass. We're good. We're okay. Um. So to have people, like, drill that back in, that's really good. Yeah, and that that little reminder really goes a long way because I, I consider myself an overthinker. So being somebody that overthinks a lot, he was really like, this is the reality. This is your mindset. <laughs> this What's is your sign? I'm a Sag Sagittarius. Sag Yes. Okay, okay. So I do. Does that have? Does that correlate with overthinking? I'm not really into zodiac signs. Um. No. I mean, I feel like women just overthink. That is very true I think too. It's a women. It's a woman thing. Mm -hmm. I don't really think mm -hmm. it's a zodiac thing. I think it's just. I'm just. Oh yeah, but yeah. So he really just keeps me right on track, puts me right back into reality and out of my head. Good. Yeah. Good. 
I was glad. I was like, I hope he's not like nagging you on cam for mm-hmm. like getting your nerves or anything like that. I was like, I hope this is like actually it jails well. Yes, it would really. And I think the cool thing is being on campus as large as it is, we don't see each other. So oh. this is his place for the business building. Okay. And okay. I'm in the engineering building at the back of the campus. Mm-hmm. So we literally only convene if we're in our apartment. So, good. yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to our Black girl business. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I want to shout out this academy. It is called Queens United Leadership Academy. So this academy is empowering our generations of women to lead change. A great example, this is a World Suicide Prevention Month. And they're right now having an awareness type of contest or um, they have a post out right now about it, uh, basically just trying to promote that awareness, get that out. Because um, especially in college, a lot of students go through that, um, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Very, very unfortunate. Um, and sometimes it'd be outside stuff that also kind of like fly with school stuff. And it's now our very first time having to kind of like balance that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because first of all, we had to like, like we were at home with our family so we can kind of deal with that. Right. But now we're not going home. <laughs> <laughs> no. That that problem is so far away and we can't even touch it. And it I mean, it plays on our mental health. Um, so many organizations you might get into uh, plays on our mental health. So it's very, very, very important um, to do that mm-hmm. and, and to make sure that we are um, spreading that awareness. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. That's my little black girl business of the week. Anybody you want to shout out? Of course. So I have the honor of having this lady. Her name is Asia. She does my hair in styles. I have to give her a little shout out. Made in Asia. Okay. It's M A D E I N A E J A. On Instagram, follow her and you know, go ahead and book that appointment because she'll do you right. She'll do you right. Mm-hmm. Girl, that's gonna be booked too booked to do to do you. I know. Don't book her out though. <laughs> that, that's my only I request. That's my her. only request. And then don't book her out. Well, maybe she'll just have you kind of like you now just kind of always penciled pending. in, yeah. You know, pinned in, girl, oh. like permanent marker. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need that. Yeah, right. for sure. People work around what well, we, I mean, no favoritism or anything, but she was in her. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, yay. If I wore weave, then okay. I'm not a big weave girl, but I know she probably does. Does she do like braids or anything like that, or is it just installs? She does installs. Um, she has a variety of hair. She does, oh, she does silk presses. So she, yeah, she does do a variation of or a variety of different hairstyles. I actually got into this with Miss Prairie View. Mm-hmm. With the heat, this Texas heat, you know, if I wanted to do a silk press, it wouldn't last but a day. And that's even giving it too much. So, you know, I had to find a way to make sure that I always look kind of proper every yeah. time I step outside. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess people watching know me. Like, oh, <laughs> let me wear like my sweats and let me come as I am. Let me come as I am. Yeah. I'm just not you know. <laughs> Same person, find my way back to who I was. <laughs> but no, yes, y'all definitely check out her girl. Check her out. Mm-hmm. And I'm definitely going to have her Instagram in the description. And I might just put it somewhere here. Right? Yes. I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm really excited. So, let's kind of just step back a little bit. Because I want you to go a little bit into your platform and why you chose um, because it resonated with me too, mm-hmm. right? Finding my voice and being able to understand the power of my voice. Yes. Uh, especially with a podcast because y'all just hear me talk. Yeah. This is my voice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it definitely correlated with me and I was like, I need her so one because she's going to help me give me all the energy I need to keep this thing going. Mm-hmm. So start from the beginning, how you came up with it, what the dream was, and then how it came to life. Yes. So to start off, coming into the Miss Prairie View process, I had an advisor of our organization say, I think you should 
apply to Venus Prairie. So at this time, I was very quiet. I was still getting my bearings. So a little bit of background. I came from a very diverse environment. So Sugar Land is very diverse, yeah. And um, coming to Prairie View, I chose because I wanted to be engulfed in the HBCU culture and African-American. I actually met my first African-American friend at Prairie View at 18. So exactly. So it was it was a lot. Girl. Mic what? drop? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, I know. You said it again. <laughs> <laughs> I met my first African American friend. Like, disregarding being mixed and like African American. I know. I know we can consider biracials African American as well. Uh, upper CPK. Yes, but yeah. like, yeah, fully African American. Like, your both of your parents. Yes, I know. You had. I mean, you. Seen an African American? Oh yeah, but family. You just haven't been a friend. You haven't befriended an African American. Exactly. Hey okay, girl, cool. I'm African American, <laughs> black as hell. I might add, I'm black like that. Black skin, beige, fluorescent beige. I'm I'm black. <laughs> hey girl. <laughs> and I love it. I love this Yay. experience. Every day, I'm oh always learning God, something. That is beautiful. Yes. Yes. So with the culture change for me, culture shock. Yes, it was definitely like okay. I definitely came. I kind of went back. You know, coming into Prairie View, I had to feel comfortable in what is now my new environment, my new home for the next four years. Um, I, however, I felt that I was able to do it because everybody in my family did it. I was like, y'all came out great, so that therefore I could come out great. Um, and it. Coming to um, Prairie View, I had that experience. Um, so my advisor, I joined organizations when I was a freshman. And the Bells of Prairie View, it's a social organization. We do, we work the football games and basketball games. Um, and I joined that organization. My advisor had told me, she was like, you know, I really think you should look into it. I said, okay. I was a freshman, so I couldn't have done it as a rising junior, rising senior was how you can were able to apply. So I took the time to think. I said, okay, yes. So. I ended up applying and just really throughout the whole process of being Miss Prairie View was literally me discovering my voice and feeling confident and comfortable in my voice. Um, coming from a very diverse environment and then coming into a solely African-American environment culture, it's, def it's very different. So at times I felt like my voice wasn't really needed to be heard because my experience was different from a lot of people. And at times it was, it was just hard to express myself because I didn't, nobody understood where I came from and I couldn't understand where everybody else came from. Like I was definitely open-minded. I wanted to put myself in people's shoes, but it's different trying to put yourself in somebody else's shoes and going through something like that. So um, that definitely influenced me a lot to, to find a platform that really embodied who I was and what I wanted to become. As much as I'm pushing this platform and wanting the student body to grow, it's going to grow me too, you know? Mm -hmm. and I'm very passionate about it. Um, and it's definitely getting me out of my shell to be somebody to be the first person to speak up and say something and voice my opinions. I mean, even being with the world that we live in, you know, African-American women mm -hmm. voicing their opinions, you're automatically deemed to be aggressive and something very negative. Um, and it's, getting out of that headspace and knowing okay regardless of what anybody else has to say about me what i have to say is important i am important i mean something to somebody I, what i have to say means something it could possibly help somebody improve or change in their lives so that that's what built me throughout this platform experience and i i really cannot wait for this year to to start so i can start these events and see for everybody to see different ways of how your voice can really impact and change your your future. I mean, that's powerful. They, they, that's so powerful to me. Um, wow. I'm stuck on, I mean, wow. Yeah. yeah, your voice definitely does matter, especially because your background um, and you are now kind of just all around African Americans all day, every day. That's, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I love it. That the experience is very unique, girl. Yes, it very is. Much so. I hope you know this is a niche. So. <laughs> Please 
But yeah, every HBCU campus that I've been on, and I'm really excited. That's why I also love the podcast too, because I get to go on so many HBCU campuses. <laughs> um, everybody's nice. Everybody's nice. They're beautiful. They're humble. They're cool. They're mm-hmm. helpful. Mm-hmm. Very. Yes. So um, expect that everywhere, just about. Yes. For the most general, you know, part, I think, inside stuff. But yes. That's why I kind of wet my WSU shirt on today. I'm no, I'm pregnant. I'm, I love my HBCU. Yeah. You know that? I love my HBCU. You know that? My H in front of my B, my B in front of my C. I love my HBCU. They got it saying, oh, I don't forget the dance. So, oh, say, well, we said, oh, say, you, but you can say, BBU. Mm-hmm. I can write it down. BBU. You got me I need to search oh, this up. Oh, 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 oh. I love that. My H in front of my B, my B in front of my C. I love my H B C U. You know that song. I've never. It's my first time. Girl, introduce it to the campus. Yeah, I got you now. Yes. That would be, that be a new tradition. That would be a new tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Get the rowdy, I love my the H B C You get the whole court to do it. Yes. Look it up on social media. It's, it's the dance. I can't remember, it, girl. It's been so long. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm so excited. Me too. Yay. Yeah. So definitely finding your voice, um, and speaking out. And I'm really glad that you have that platform here for all HBCU girls on campus because your voice can get lost, mm-hmm. um, in the sauce sometimes. And um, you gotta dig it out. You gotta find your way back. Find your voice. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. And sometimes coming to college is where you, you know, actually find your voice. Like this is the epitome. This is the reason why I have a voice. Um. So that's beautiful within itself as well, which is another reason why HBCUs is so beautiful because be yourself unapologetically. And if yes. you don't seize the opportunity, unfortunately, that's your fault. And then you're thousands, 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 thousands of debt. Mm. And you could have used that to actually elevate and um, become just better you, and right? Or at least find that foundation, right? Some type of foundation you need. Um, that's why it's so important to pick your school for you. Yes, exactly. this is your foundation. This is what's going to help you spring up. Um, these are why we have advisors around and people that are around that are supposed to uplift our students, that's supposed to encourage our students, um, as well as HBCUs. First, this is why I'm biased. So <laughs> Yep, so the next segment is my favorite segment, is service. Mm -hmm. We cannot leave that out. It's very important for our queens to be very active in the community um, and to get their school active also in the community, no matter how big or small the community is around them, um, to promote community service and events and create awareness, things of that nature. So I want you to go ahead and tell us, and if it correlates with your um, platform that you Together. Yes. Um, but yeah, what what you got cooking, Miss? So what I'm so excited to announce is I have a little Miss 1876. So this is a Miss Prairie View Legacy um, program that was established, I believe, 2017. And um, so basically, we bring young ladies to campus, ages six to 13. They come to campus. They learn what it is. I don't want to say what it is to be a queen, but in a sense educating just a little bit more as to um, what a queen is about, what an HBCU queen is. Um, And something that I'm going to do to bring in my platform is I already have these lists of affirmations. That's one of my things that I'll be doing for the student body is dropping affirmations because I want everybody to hear themselves speak positively about themselves. Um, When you speak things, manifestation, you know, when you speak things, if you're not there right now, as time goes on, you're going to feel it, believe it. And it's going to be second nature. And I want to establish that in these young, beautiful African-American girls um, to feel confident in themselves because the world time life gets hard. They don't know it just yet, or they might do know what it, what it feels like, but it's just to have that safe ground of knowing that they themselves got them and how you feel about yourself can change how, you know, you can impact anybody's life or even your own life. So that's one of my biggest events that I'm really excited for that's coming up October 7th. 
Um, and I'll even have young ladies on campus as well help me carry out this event. And um, for them, it would be like a community service um, opportunity for them. And yeah, so that's, that's my biggest event that I have going on. Yes. yes. I love They're so cute. They are. And I'm so excited. They get a little tiara, get a little tiara, a little stash. They'll get to walk in the parade for homecoming. So they get to have their little highlighted moment. And as it should be, you know, yeah. exposure is very great, you know. Um, I wish I had that when I was six, you know, and just to be around a Miss Prairie View queen or just an HBCU queen in general. So far, my experience wearing the crown in an audience of little kids, their eyes just get super big. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you could be one too, you yeah. know. You just, just to have that physical representation um, and that model makes a big difference, I, I feel and I hope, just to see how their face lights up. Mm-hmm. I, it definitely impacts them in a great way that I possibly don't even know, you know? Right. So. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. Myself. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. We'll definitely be looking out for that. Yes. Um, and how that comes along. So that is so nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think every school has their little Miss uh, pageant. So I love what they show. They're so nice. They're so motivational, inspirational. I mean, and like you said, I wish I had that too. Um, I had Upper Vale, but that was like high school that kind of introduced me to HBCU. My sister went to St. Aug. Um, so I was always on St. Aug's campus. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of got me into knowing that there are HBCUs and the impact they do have on African Americans each and every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so to have that exposure at any age before 18 is yes. very eye-opening and very much so needed. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. much. Very, very much. much so. Um, so, girl, that's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. That's all we got for y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. Right. I know. I mean, it's just this me. I don't know what to say. It's me, and uh, we're going to stick through it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to grow. This is going to get better and better and better and better. I know it. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. So, stick around for season three. Um, we have our next queen coming up. You know I never tell the queen. I don't, there's no reason to. You see it when you see it. Okay? <laughs> um, but yes, just know I'm doing a Texas tour, so I might be at your next HBCU if you are in Texas. Um, so yeah, girl, thank you. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed myself. Yes. Oh my God. We and I it. wish you success. But thank season you. three. Yes. Sorry, I keep messing with my mic, y'all, by the way. But like, comment, and subscribe. This is going to be on YouTube. So, yes, like, comment, subscribe. Tell all your HBCU girls about the podcast in the, ep- in the episode. I will. So that they can be tuned in and subscribe. Apple Podcasts, too. Subscribe there as well. So the audio is going to be on Apple Podcasts. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep the Apple Podcast and the Spotify. Mm-hmm. And then because now we're visual, um, it's going to be on YouTube. Okay. So. We love, yeah. that. love that. Oh, well, thank you. Bye, ladies. Yay. That was not bad.